Hey guys, welcome back. Chris here, CG Aviator, bringing you a first look at the GKS F111 for Microsoft Flight Sim. As an ex-Tornado pilot, I couldn't wait to get my hands on this type of aircraft, being swept wing, low-level, supersonic bomber. It had all the makings of something quite nice. So I spent the $40 or equivalent to show you what this looks like, and I'll put it through its paces with the good, the bad, the ugly, etc. So I'll give it a full shakedown sortie as we go. But you can probably agree with me right now that the modeling and texturing on the outside is absolutely phenomenal. I mean, let me know in the comments below what you think, but I think this is one of the better looking models, especially in textures that I have seen in a while. But there are some big downers, not least the flight dynamics, and we'll uh, put it through its paces there. But whilst we're here, let's go around the outside and uh, check out some of that texturing. So we've got a matte black nose cone, which looks really nice, shiny fuselage. I'll go down at the undercarriage because that's always a telltale of good modeling. Actually, there's plenty of linkages, nice clear lenses on those lights. Love it. Intake is nice and dirty. You've got lots of wear and tear. I mean, this thing looks like it's been through the wars, which is excellent. Uh, down here, the uh, tires are Goodyear branded. And actually, look at that PBR texturing. It looks really, really nice. Uh, tanks are fitted. There are weapons in the plan. I think in the introductory video, the developers were suggesting they're going to add TFR. The TFR is not yet enabled on this aircraft and they are going to add weapons. Of course, if you add it to, or if you buy it from the marketplace, uh, I doubt you'll ever see the weapons. But here's the pylons that we have. Look at that. I mean, the, the picture, it's a baked on picture, but it's so crisp and clear. It's really, really nice. I'll show you the night lighting as well later. But what else have we got around the back end? The back end is particularly nice, if you'll excuse the phraseology. But look at that shiny metal, dirty engines. The animation on the afterburner is actually one of the better ones as well that I've seen. So we'll show you that for takeoff. So here we are in the cockpit of the F-111. And again, it just carries on from what you saw outside. The textures are absolutely fantastic. Uh, I don't know where they got their model from, whether they do it in-house or whether they bought it off shelf and developed it further. But my goodness, it looks amazing. So uh, you saw the canopy open. That doesn't change the sound of the engine once we start up, which is a shame. So hopefully that comes in an update. But the animations themselves are really nice. We have some uh, armrests here. I mean, that's nice and smooth, isn't it? Uh, we've got a something to do with weapons or radar handling there. Nice stick. Again, it's all first show, but nice little touches like that really make uh, the cockpit feel a bit more alive. I mean, just look at the seating. Seating textures look good too. Uh, so overall, very, I mean, look at the text as well. Text stands out really nicely. So well done, kudos on a very, very nice interior. Uh, I'll give you a quick cockpit tour so you kind of know the basics. I'm not going to dive into what each switch does because the, the other thing is there's no manual that I could find uh, for this. This is the marketplace version I downloaded. I checked all the folders, couldn't find it. Googled some stuff, couldn't find it. So hopefully they'll produce a manual because there's a few things that I couldn't get to work and I'd, I'd like to know if it's me or whether it, it's bugs. So I'll mention those as we go. OK, down on the left hand side, uh, we have various bits that I'm not going to talk about. We have uh, your damper, pitch, your and roll autopilot setting on that panel here. We have the throttles, which are duplicated both sides, depending on which side you're sitting. And if you have them in the idle position and you right click on them, they actually go into the cutoff and they just move out of cutoff by moving the throttle. So that's how that works. Outboard of that, you have the flap setting. And above that, just above the canopy rail, you have the wing sweep. You also have the ability to set a maximum wing sweep angle just in case you're carrying stores that would conflict with where the wings are. So that's all cool. The problem I have with this is in the, and I believe it's the F-14 by heat blur or other aircraft that have swept wings that I've flown in previous. If you move the flaps all, all the way up, then the flaps will come up. If you keep moving the flap up as in your hot key or, or a key bind for flap up, it will then move the wing sweep back which is really easy. But as far as I can tell, and again, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, you have to click and drag to uh, move the wing sweep at the moment. Uh, what else we've got? Land taxi lights is here. We've got anti-skid. We've got the master arm and release. This little switch here is a bit nondescript, isn't it? But that is your master arm pretty much. And a nuclear consent arm and release. Look at that. Uh, above that, we have the fire section or fire lights. Uh, we also have a hook down. I couldn't get that hook to release. We have the jettison button that does jettison your external stores. Uh, I couldn't see them fall away. I think they just disappear, but that kind of works. To the right of that, we have the flap and wing sweep indicator. We have the surface temperature of the aircraft. We have the three greens uh, for the wheels. We have the nav source. Uh, more on that later. And we have the uh, 
warning caution warning panel beneath that. Up here we have a head-up display which has a collimated sight. We'll play with that uh, once we're airborne because that's quite good fun. Uh, beneath that we have a very nice attitude indicator. I like this a lot. Uh, beneath that we have a HSI way that looks more like a HSI than I'm used to. Uh, now let's have a look at these these vertical strip indicators. My goodness, uh, they're really trying to challenge me here. So left to right we have G and Alpha, I believe. Then we have Mac and knots indicated on the right hand side we have climb dive in thousands of feet and then we have your altitude in hundreds thousands and tens of thousands of feet why they did that i i have no idea but that's how they've done it underneath those you have little gray switches once the uh, electrics are on you can actually set your commanded altitude and speed for the autopilot to work now another caveat i couldn't get the autopilot to work but i'll caveat that caveat with there's no instruction manual i couldn't quite figure out how to get it to work or confirm the way that's buggy or you know you get my point uh, beneath that, the only thing I really use is the pitot heat, which is down on the uh, lower front center there. Moving swiftly on, we have radar altimeter, we have uh, the engine instrumentation, we then have a standby, uh, standby instrument set up here, we have a radio panel, more on that once we get things started, but that is that is really nice. There's some really good features for this. I get excited by the radio panel. How weird's that? But you'll see why in a minute. Uh, underneath that, we have the TACAN. Further down in front of the WISO seat, you have the ILS frequency. And if we move down the center pedestal or center console, there we go like that. That'll do. We have some other switches. We have uh, fuel pumps. We have a TFR, which is not yet modeled. We have, I think these are spike switches, but they say spine anyway. Uh, another throttle. Further back, we have the IFF. Then we have the battery, ground power, external power stuff, and then we have the uh, air conditioning panel. And I think uh, this is a reconnaissance switch. Okay, moving over to the weapons uh, systems operator or co-pilot seat. Uh, again, you can see in front of you have scopes, which are, you can switch them on, I think, but they don't really display anything active. So I'm not gonna play with them today. You also have INS. I can't confirm if that is, uh, that it actually works, but you can align it, it'll heat up, then you can put it into a, a nav source, uh, and away you go. Uh, on the right hand side, there's a lot of switches that you don't really need to be too au fait with. There's a backup uh, radio, there's some radar uh, switches that they all move, but I don't think the radar works. And then you have the weapon control panel where you can select buttons uh, for uh, weapons for jettison, etc. So that is the right hand side. Finally, uh, in fact, second to last, behind us we have the lights. So ex uh, internal lights are the big knobs and internal lights are the little switches, and we'll play with that and do some night lighting in a minute. Okay, finally, and a really good feature is the click spots we have on the glare shield. Uh, so thank you to them for putting the nose wheel steering up here. Usually it's on the side of the stick, uh, just here. Um, but if you're wondering why you can't turn on the ground, that is where the nose wheel steering is. If you move further across, you have these little checklists uh, or uh, frequency presets, which I think are great. I think you can change the files uh, so that they preload with whatever you want but you can also edit them yourself. How cool is that? Now I have noticed that you can see if I move uh, the track IR position, it kind of bleeds through from the gauges behind. I think that's what it is, but when my head's still, they disappear. Um, whether that's my graphics or whether that's a bug, I have no idea, um, but you can edit them. So with the cross, you can click edit, you can hit the cross, you can delete stuff. And then if you want to add stuff in, you can uh, set it on the panel, either click the button here to set or you can click on the frequency up here and it'll load whatever's down there up here. Uh, I'll do some more of that maybe once uh, once we started. Uh, but that is a very, very nice feature. I like it a lot. Uh, I love the style of them too. That's really nice. Okay, what else we got? Radio panel. Uh, you can change the radio panel. I don't know why you would. If you prefer Cessna type avionics in your F111, go for it. But uh, no, that's going to be that. Load up panel. Once the weapons are enabled, you'll have presets and the ability to do all of these things, which will be very cool. Uh, you could add more tanks. I'm not going to bother, but that's where you find the loadout. And then you have set up for ground, uh, ground power, ground start unit and the starter cartridge. More on that for the startup. And you can have pre safe state, ready to taxi or cold and dark, which works nicely. OK, it's time to fire it up and get her airborne. So there is a checklist you can follow. I've already mentioned there's no manual that I could find. It's a fairly decent checklist. Uh, I'll do the abbreviated version for starting because that's just the way I roll. Uh, but there's a couple of gotchas in here, like the engine starter cartridge, uh, the throttle position uh, that might catch you out. And I'll talk about that now. So I will move the compressor bleed, which is to the auto position. I'll then go around the right hand side. Uh, all of these are here by default. This, by the way, is where the engine dump switch is. We'll do some dump and burn action later. 
Uh, moving further back, this is the ground start, so pneumatic or cartridge. I'm going to leave that there for now, to be honest. And then if I move further back, we've got the battery. If I switch the battery on, not a lot happens. But the next switch next to it is the external power, and you'll see AC bus tie. It also starts coming to life. Happy days. Uh, with external power applied, what I'm going to do whilst I remember is align the INS, and you can see the little yellow lights come on to say heat. I'm probably going to forget about that later, but at least I've shown you where it is now. Okay, we can switch the left, we're going to do the left first. I'll switch the generator to run. I will double check on the setup that we have the starter cartridge. And the easy way to remember this is the starter cartridge is for the left engine and the ground start unit is for the right. That might not be accurate, that's the only way I can get it to work and do the left engine then the right engine. If you start the right engine first using pneumatic, I don't think you have the option to add the cartridge, which obviously causes this issue because you only have one engine. All right, so we've got the cartridge in, we've put all the electricals on, we've put the left generator on, happy days. Uh, we'll put the air conditioning, air source to both, and then we'll switch this ground start to cartridge. You can see that the left RPM is starting up. Now, if you find that it doesn't start up, it could be that you need to have the throttle to idle. So we'll put, make sure that is out of the cutoff and we put it to the idle position. And then just give it a few bananas. If it gets to 20, it hangs around a little bit, thinks about it, and then it spools up. I'll wait until it starts to line up, light up, and then what I'll do is I'll skip forwards to start in the right engine. Now, the engine sounds, I'm told, are the default F18 ones which is kind of bad juju if that's true because that's quite expensive, you know, $40 for an add-on and it's not using different sounds. But, I mean, they sound good, so there we go. So the left engine has started. I've got uh, throttle control. You can see things kick to life there. If I look down to the left-hand side, you can see the left generator is still illuminated on the control panel, on the warning panel. So if I... I could have sworn I moved that into the right position. And I put that to start, the left generator's gone out, which is cool, now I can start the right engine. So, in order to start the right engine, we'll go up to the setup. We will click on the ground start unit. And we will hit the ground start pneumatic. The right engine is spooling up. It's not actually in cutoff. Let me see what happens if I put it in cutoff. Nope. Okay, so it's still spooling up under pneumatic ground start. Happy. Now, I think what the manual says, or what I've read, is you wait till 70%, move the throttle to the idle position, and then it should start up the rest of the way. But that is both engines started. But in summary, just make sure that you have the cartridge fitted for the first one, and you start the left using cartridge. And then for the second one, make sure you've got the pneumatic, uh, the ground start and use pneumatic on the switch and you can see that switch moves back to off once it's uh, I guess done its job. So now we've got the engines both started and what you'll notice once we get this generator on, maybe I should put that to start first, with both generators left and right on because the caution warning's out, so you get uh, AC bus normal which means it's working and switch off the external power so that is all sorted. On the caution warning panel, pitch, roll and yaw uh, so there's pitch, there's roll, there's yaw. Forward to that is the anti-skid. And then down here we've got the pitot probe. So that gets rid of the left-hand lights. The right-hand lights, this is that right and left engine spike. I, I have no idea if I'm being honest. Uh, so I'm not going to mess around with it. Okay, now it's all started up. Let's have a look down at this radio panel. So I really like this radio panel. And here is why. If I set this to nav, for instance... And I set it to preset, important to have it on preset first because if you dial in the manual frequency like this and then click it to preset, it will change the frequency of just preset. What is that master caution for? Fuel distribution. Again, that's another caution warning I don't know about, but it seems to fix itself, so I'll just punch that master caution out. Anyway, back to the radio. So we're on nav. I've set it to preset. I'm going to set it to 20. There we go. I'm going to set the frequency to 111. One, one, just for grins and then I'm going to drop down the nav and then if I hit this button down here so push to set channel I'm hoping fingers crossed there she is just there or I can click anywhere on here if I edit 
and click anywhere on here it'll just add stuff and it's adding adding different ones because that's what's in the channel already okay or you can delete them delete so if you've got a mission that has five or six different frequency changes then just dial them in here absolutely brilliant function love it well done gks uh, for the tacan it's the wheel around the outside that does the big numbers as well so if you wanted 111x that is set and make sure you're on t and r which is transmit receive uh, it looks like my ins has finished heating so i'm going to put it into i don't know short range because that's what we're doing i've no idea if that's doing anything but i've done it right well i believe we're just about ready to taxi so what i'm going to do is uh, fast forward to the end of the runway we'll have a quick look at the night lighting so i'm not trying to fly it whilst i'm dialing in things behind my head and then we'll show you these flight dynamics that really really need working on note to self before taxiing nose while steering nice big green button there and then i'm also going to shut the canopy so i don't forget about it in terms of taxiing it's a little bit go-kartish, I have to say. Uh, very flat, but I think that might be a thing with most aircraft. Um, but again, if you drive it like you would any other fast jet, which is generally less than 25 knots, and you're gentle on the rudder, it'll respond how you tell it to. Okay, we're now at the threshold, not quite ready for takeoff. What I did need to do is the flaps, so I shall select the flaps to take off. I can select the taxi light on, and if I go to the outside, we'll see what the lights look like. The very, very bright taxi light, we'll put it into night time, and you'll just see how bright these lights are. So this is night time. As soon as you switch uh, the sun out, you get the instant uh, flood lighting and that is the lighting that you have it's kind of pinky red you can see the taxi light out the front which is very very bright you've seen the red ones so that's these ones off white flood light actually the white flood light is pretty good let's turn that other the other red one off where is it is that it yeah it's not too bad Floodlight's pretty good. I like it. So that's the internal lights. If I go for the outside lights, we've got the tail light, wing light uh, flashing. I mean, you can see that thing already flashing in the background. Anti collision, fuselage. There we go. Let's have a look outside, see what that looks like. I mean, wow, that is crazy bright. Okay, time to go and show you what this thing will do in the air. That's to say, some rather funky stuff. What we have, flaps. We have enough of what we need for lights. The IFF, I put it to, uh, to on for 7,000. Pito is on, caution warning panel only has the things that I can't get rid of because I don't know how to do it. I don't know how about the seat. I put the master arm to live uh, and let's get going. Now as we power up towards 100% on the RPM, which is just here, you'll notice the nozzle gets progressively lower until the burner lights, and you'll see the nozzles kick, or should I say flick. There we go, burners are lit, in the tornadoes we say kick and then flick, and off we go, speed's alive, that's through 100, I mean look at the speed gauge, 150, 160, Something there, let's go. Richie, climbing, gear up, lap up. Gear lights are out, lights in the handle are out if there were any, and the flap is indicating up. We're going up through 300 knots, so I'll bring the power back. You'll see the nozzles kick back down again, and the burners are out. I'll show you the takeoff again from the outside because the burner animation is super duper. We love that.
Uh, right, let's show you from the outside what happens when you are a bit too aggressive with this aircraft. I mean, this is me just... I'm not even doing full scale forwards and back, and that is ridiculous. There's more nose track on this aircraft than the Typhoon. And just if I roll too much, oh, it just does crazy things. So, yes, please, GKS, um, it, it needs some work, please. But like I always say, if you fly these aircraft like you're supposed to fly them, which is uh, in a cruciform shape with the stick, so forwards and back, and then to roll, you, you centre the stick and go left and right, you do it nice and smoothly, it will react how you think it's going to react. But if you want to pull the nose round, <laughs> I mean, it will do some crazy stuff. Uh, but there we go. Now, you can go too fast with the wing sweeps. It will tell you because it will have a red light. In fact, I'll show you that. Uh, and just throwing it around, I mean, if you do it gently, which is easy to do with my setup because I've got a stick, a stick in, ugh, hard for me to say. I have a stick extension tube, which makes my inputs a bit smoother. But you can see my speed is too fast for the wing sweep. So wing sweep, I'll put it back a bit. And that goes away. Right, let's throw it around from the outside so you can see what it's like. Okay, yeah, let's look at that burner animation one last time. That is nice. Okay, being gentle on the controls. Got some ribbons off the wings. Got the usual uh, condensation on the main portion of the wings. Look pretty good. As long as you behave yourself and don't get too enthusiastic with the stick, you can throw it around as much as you want to. Let's pull the power and see what the stall is like. That master caution, fuel distribution, no idea. Maybe we'll run out of fuel, maybe we won't. So here we are in the stall. You can hear the stall warner in the background, you can see the red light, that's cool. Pulling the stick all the way back, so the stick is now as far back as I can get it. Nose is coming down. But no buffet. Not really much of an event stalling in the F111, or at least in this model. Okay, here we are, established at low level. We're doing, uh, what are we doing? Like 400, it's around 400 knots. The rad out is working at the top right there. That works out fine. Watch out for the trees. And you can also set it to give you an alert. Uh, for instance, there we go, set it to 400, you go below, and the alert comes on. But then you go above, and the alert stays on. I'm not sure how you reset that. I think the rad out panel is down here somewhere, but that shouldn't stay on, I don't think. Anyway, that's my previous experience. That won't go away now. Um, but I mean, look at the scenery, how nice is this? Beautiful. But if you're cruising around low level, absolutely lovely aircraft, just treat it right. You, if you start moving it around, I mean, you can see it's <laughs> dynamically pretty unstable. Um, but there we go, that's the problem with a lot of aircraft, because it just doesn't seem like Microsoft Flight Sim aircraft have enough inertia. That said, the Vulcan from Just Flight managed to do inertia very well indeed, and if you haven't seen that video, here's the plug. Please go and watch it. It's a lot of fun. Okay, so there are some farm buildings down there that I'll probably use as a target. Let's do uh, some high-angle strafe. So I'll rotate the HUD to air to ground. There's a nice reticle in there. You can see there's uh, wing markers. That uh, central line looks to be also a wings level indicator, so I like that a lot. I wonder what the indicator on the right tells me. We'll soon find out. Uh, but we'll do kind of a 20 to 30 degree dive down here. Uh, I've got the wings back one stage, as you'll need to, otherwise you'll be overspeeding them, and I want to be about 350 knots. It's what I'm going for anyway. If I keep my bank angle to 30 and put my target roughly where my wings are, then by the time I turn around to it, I should be roughly 30 degrees. We'll see if that works out. Okay, I've got a target in mind, an L-shaped building. Bring it round. Try not to increase the throttle. Oh, first time's a charm, speed's coming up. In dry on north. And corner, firing, firing, recover. Very fast, too fast. Anyway, that was the first. That was the first go. You can change your wing sweep, you can change your profile as you want to, you can pull the power. There's lots of things you could do. That's just a demonstration of what you could do in terms of profile and use of the head-up display. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, 
the time you've all been waiting for, the dump and burn. Here's the dump. And here's the burn. <laughs> it's not bad. It's not bad. I think that's pretty cool. <laughs> right, there we go. Let's uh, let's stop venting fuel and let's take this airplane back for a landing. There's my runway. Now I recommend with this aircraft to do a left-hand patterns if you're flying from the left-hand seat, so that way you can see it out of the window. There is a jolly good top tip for you. I'm going to run it at 350 knots through initial, we'll do a run and break. I'll probably not use the speed brake, I might be able to bleed enough speed off, I'm looking to get below 250, and I'm guessing on the speeds and the profiles, because again, I haven't read the manual, so I'm making it up from experience. Oh, nice view of the shadow beneath us. Okay, here we go, what are we doing? 340 knots. I've got to do the wing sweep as well, so don't forget that. Sneak into initial here. That out suggests 200 feet. I'll take that. Okay, we are clear. Roll, pull, idle, swapping hands to use the mouse to do the wing sweep forwards. Climbing up. I'm kind of guessing on the altitude. Good, it's about 1,000 feet perhaps. I'm guessing on the heading, and normally I'd uh, figure out the runway heading and just do reciprocal. About a thousand feet, 200 knots, gear, flap down. Didn't use air brake on that. Okay, flaps down. Two greens. And I want to keep a little bit of speed in because I'm turning around the corner, but I'm using the alpha gauge on the left-hand side of the head-up display for my speed. So let's pull a little bit of power. Let's see where that uh, green donut comes in. There's the green donut. So I am in final turn about 150 knots. A little bit high, but we'll play that out and this should work out okay. bit fast, 160 knots. Nice road with the traffic going on. Okay, green donut. Do not get fast, do not get fast. Green donut. We need to keep the power low because now we roll out, we need less speed. Might pop the speed brake. Will it let me? Might not let me. Okay, a bit high on the alpha, a bit high on the alpha, there we go. We are 125 knots. Well, this is my second landing ever in this aeroplane. Here we go. It's a greaser, and we're down. So that was the F111. Thanks for watching. If you're still here, please like and subscribe if this was val of value to you. And please check in the comments any questions you have or thoughts you have on this aircraft. But overall, very nice visuals, really good potential, but the flight dynamics are awful. And there are just a few bugs here and there, and it'd be great to see a manual. But a good start. I hope the developers continue to update this as we go. But thanks for watching. Take care. Fly safe.